This is Eagle Al, and today we'll be talking about Devontae Smith. Why is he not producing? What is going on with Devontae Smith? Is it Devontae Smith? Is it Jalen Hurts? Is it Kellen Moore? We're going to talk about it. Also, CJGJ, man, he turned it around on y'all. He looking good according to the numbers. Lastly, we're going to talk about Cooper DeGene and Quayon Mitchell once again, just doing their thing. But let's get straight into it. Let's not ignore the obvious. Yes, I'm late today. I'm late. I'm going to tell y'all the truth what happened. I was watching the Cowboys game, and I usually shoot my videos at night. I fell asleep. Like, that's not even me. I'm watching it. I fell asleep. Woke up like 1 in the morning. I seen the Cowboys get blown out. I knew I was going to have the day off, so I'm like, I ain't going to trip. I ain't going to trip. They going to get a video. So uh, we here. We here. Uh, it was fun watching the Cowboys get destroyed a little bit. Went to sleep. <laughs> and then uh, they got destroyed more. Uh, Cowboys downfall. Need to be studied. Like, I've seen bad teams. Like, we got the Browns. They're a bad team. Uh, the Panthers. You, you know, you got the teams that are bad. But at least I see them fight every Sunday, Monday, or Thursday whenever they play. But my God, I don't even see a fight in the Cowboys. Like, if you're a bad team, at least fight. Like, I seen some fight in the Giants. I seen them fight with the Commanders, at least. But the Cowboys not even fighting. That's the problem. But all right, so let's talk about it. Um, let's talk about Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith, I know this has been a somewhat of a hot topic like what's going on with Devontae Smith his numbers dropping uh is Jalen Hurts seeing him Jalen Hurts had him on that wide open crosser what's going on and I think it's a little of everything actually like Jalen Hurts missing him J Devontae Smith has some rare drops uh Kellen Moore need to scheme him just a little more and there were just some plays that just didn't go Devontae Smith way when it was his number being called, but let's let Fran Duffy break it down. All right, so let's take a look at some plays that were dialed up for Devontae Smith in this game against Washington. You see him here in the slot. The Eagles are running some orbit motion here with Jahan Dotson, a playoff of the first play of the game where they threw this bubble screen to Dotson. It looks like Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown are going to block on the perimeter, but both are actually releasing out into the second level. It's a switch route concept from those guys. A.J. Brown's running to the post. Devontae Smith's going to run down the sideline on, on basically a wheel route. Washington's all over this. They stay back in their, in their zone coverage, and they eat this route up. Jalen Hurts has no nowhere to go with the football. So that was dialed up for Devontae Smith. Defense wins, takes that away. Go to a little bit later. It's third down, and you see that Devontae Smith is lined up in the slot, bottom of the screen, in a three-by-one bunch set. He comes in motion just before the snap. This is basically going to be a rub route, a pick play designed specifically for Devontae Smith against man-to-man -man coverage, perfectly executed there by the Eagles receivers. Jalen Hurts steps up into a clean pocket and steps right into a sack. I would say this was probably Hurts' worst rep of the night, a missed opportunity there on a play that was designed to go to Devontae Smith. But on the very next offensive play, first play of the next possession, Devontae pays him back because he's going to run this deep out route. Jalen Hurts rolling to his right. He puts this right on Devontae's hands along the sideline. Ball falls incomplete. It falls right out of Devontae's hands for a drop. And then a little bit later, they get into the low red zone and they run their mesh concept, a play that they've had a lot of success with this year. And instead of A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, instead of A.J. kind of setting that pick play for the defender, A.J. and Devontae run into each other. It's the first time we've seen this uh, from the Eagles this year where you have that kind of miscommunication. Jalen Hurts has nowhere to go with the football. It ends up being an incomplete pass. But that's you have four different plays that fail for four different reasons, all of them designed to go to Devontae Smith. He still had a couple catches on the night, but that's why those numbers weren't there. The past couple of weeks, the ball just hasn't found Devontae for those big plays. You see what I mean? Uh, Devontae Smith will be fine. I know the last two games been lackluster. To be fair, against the Commanders, that was a Thursday game. So it's like a back-to-back -back game. And even against the Cowboys, I think it was a lot of penalties on him that held him for having a good game. So um, Devontae Smith will be fine. I know I've been seeing that a lot. Like, what's going on with Smitty? Uh, again, is Jalen Hurts seeing him? Why is, why is he not producing like he was last year, et cetera, et cetera? But I think Devontae Smith will be fine. I think it's just more of a, um, you know, just things happening on the field. But, again, I, I think he will be perfectly fine. But, a guy, I kept telling y'all that will be fine, and you guys told me that he fell off is C.J. Gardner-Johnson. C.J. Gardner-Johnson, 
been slowly cooking these last six games. Slowly cooking. Remember, he was missing tackles. He wasn't good in coverage. But these past six games, he's been everything we asked for. CJ Gardner Johnson, according to Anthony Nabona, has not missed a tackle during this six game win streak. CJ Gardner Johnson has not missed a tackle during the six game win streak. And also, somebody wrote under his comments, like, well, what about the passing? Like, what is he doing in coverage, et cetera, et cetera. And um, Anthony Nabona put it out there. Let's go over that. According to Anthony DeBona, he said, this isn't Duncan that you thought it was. In Philadelphia's last six games, C.J. Gardner-Johnson has allowed eight receptions on 14 targets, 99 yards, one touchdown, two picks, and three PBUs. That's actually phenomenal. That's really, really good. You could build off that. So shout out to C.J. Gardner-Johnson. He's been quiet off the field. Um, on the field, we're gonna talk his junk. That's just CJ Hunter Johnson. But he's been he's been really, really quiet and just been balling. Just been balling out of his mind. And that's all we want from CJ Garner Johnson. Uh on the field, talk your talk. Off the field, just chill out, be cool, and and do your thing. Like he's not arguing with people on Twitter, Instagram. He'll probably post like a victory post, post some on his story, uh, the pictures, uh you know, that the sideline reporters took. A, a lot of our guys been really, really quiet. Of course, except Darius Slay because he got a podcast. But overall, man, a, a lot of the guys been chilling. I haven't seen, like, any rants or anything like that or anything that put us in a pickle from the players. They've been chilling. And I think that's something they probably talked about, like, during, like, uh, I don't know, a team meeting or something like that. Just let's go out here, win games, do what we got to do. Let's turn off social media. Then all season, do what you want. But I, I think we've been keeping it really, really quiet. I haven't heard anything from, like, the players at all that can cause controversy or anything like that. So shout out to the players. Shout out to CJ Garnett Johnson, man. And let's get into the last topic. Cooper DeGene and Quayon Mitchell continues, you know, to ball out. They continue to ball out, and um, they doing their thing. And let's let Baldy break down the game of the communication of just Cooper DeJean and Quinion Mitchell. These two rookies have been to the Eagles defense. Cooper DeJean and Quinion Mitchell. Watch them just go through the communication. That's the thing that both of them do. They both continuously are communicating so that there are no mistakes made on the edge. And so you just watch that, okay, Cooper gets in on that tackle. But here you go. You watch... This play right here, and you watch Quinion and you watch Cooper. Like the two of them, they have improved this defense so much. Like here they come. All right, squeeze Zach Ertz right here. Make sure, like Quinion trying to pull the ball out of Ertz's hand. The two of them, side by side, together all game. Now, watch how effortlessly Quinion runs right here with Terry McLaurin. Like you watch this right here. He's side by side with him, step for step. Like effortlessly. And they try to throw the ball over the middle to uh, to Noah Brown. And then you get this right here. Like watch his feet. Like watch Quinion. He's got outside leverage right here. So McLaren knows it. So he's going to step inside, but he's going to come outside. So watch Quinion. He wins with his feet. He just flips his hips right here. Now he's right on top of him. And the whole time, that's exactly where Daniels wants to go. But here he is right on the upfield shoulder. McLaren stops. And Quinion stops. Like, the guy wins with his feet. They're always underneath him. The two of them are great young players. Cooking. They are cooking, man. Uh, shout out to the young guys, man. The, the future is definitely bright. I know right now, the uh, betting odds, I, I'm not sponsored by no betting odds, but right now, the two-man races between Quayon Mitchell and I think uh, his name, Javon Verse or something like that, with the Rams. If I was a betting man, I think I would definitely go with Quayon Mitchell because all Quayon Mitchell needs is about two, three picks. If he get two, three picks, it's a lock. It's a lock because the things he did against these top-tier receivers, it, it just can't be, this, can't be explained. But now if he find a way to lock up uh, Puka Nakua or uh, – Cooper Cup, even though I think Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua are probably going to see Cooper DeGene a lot more, 
But if he find a way and they on his island and they can't get nothing going, man, just hand the defensive rookie of the year to him. If not, he's going to be an all-pro, which would be weird because I don't see Verse as an all-pro, but I do see Quayon Mitchell possibly being an all-pro this year. Sauce Gardner got it, and their numbers are extremely similar. The only thing Sauce Gardner had over – uh, Quayon Mitchell, like right now, is like picks in his rookie year. So we, we'll see how the lead treat Quayon Mitchell. If, if Quayon Mitchell don't get it, I'm with everybody else. The lead just don't mess with Philadelphia. I'm just saying, man. And oh, also, before I wrap this up, the ratings came out far as like who's first in offense, who's first in defense, et cetera, et cetera. The adjustments came out. So the Eagles are officially listed as first. They officially listed as the f- best team as far as on the defensive side of the ball, which you, you got to give it up to us, man. We've been playing lockdown football. Commanders had the hottest, the hottest offense. We shut them down. So shout out to the defense. Also, the offense is in the top five. I think we're number five. Shout out to the offense doing their job as well. And I know there have been a lot of complaints about the passing, the passing offense. I think the passing is ranked 14th. But you got to think the beginning of the season wasn't that great. A lot of injuries, but now we're picking it up. And I think the passing offense is going to pick it up. But that's all I got for you guys today. Hey, man, what do you think? How do you feel about everything? Uh, Queen Al Mitchell, Cooper DeGene, balling out of their mind. Also, CJ Garner Johnson figuring it out. And this is Eagle Al, man. I'm out.